WGN Evening News. More than six years after 21 people died in the stampede, someone is facing punishment tonight. Two men, actually, both owners of the E2 nightclub, sentenced today to time behind bars. Hello, I'm Mark Sapelsa. And I'm Lourdes Duarte. Thank you for joining us. WGN's Muriel Claire has tonight's top story. Former E2 nightclub owner Dwayne Kyles and his partner Calvin Hollins beat manslaughter charges in the death of 21 people, but they're going to jail for a housing code violation. Their attorneys say never in the history of this county or this state has a building code violation resulted in a prison sentence until now. We knew that we are in a tough fight. Uh, we are up against uh, the city of Chicago, uh, and uh, we live to fight another day. Uh, and it is our intention to use all of the resources that we have and to bring to bear to see to it that this matter continues. A jury found Kyles and Hollins guilty in September of violating a judge's order to close the second floor of their nightclub. Kyles maintained all along that he had done nothing wrong. He said his interpretation of the order was that only the second floor balcony was off limits and the rest of the floor could be used. I've argued all along in this case that those 21 people would still be alive today if those four court orders had been obeyed. That's all you had to do. Just close the place. Don't keep it open for business. At today's sentencing hearing, the defense said the lives that were lost had nothing to do with the pending code violation. The 21 people killed were caught in a stampede trying to get out of the club after a fight broke out on the dance floor and a security guard tried breaking it up with pepper spray. U.S. Congressman Bobby Rush in court today to support Kyles accused the city of trying to cover up for what he indicated was the city's inept handling of the tragedy as it was developing. I wonder in my hearts of hearts whether or not if this had been predominated by white citizens, whether or not riot police would have been called rather than rescue police. Hollins, maintaining that he did nothing to result in the punishment meted out today, said he would continue to fight. It has taken me to this point in my life to realize the justice system is not fair for all. Kyle's acknowledging the huge number of supporters that filled the courtroom forced back tears. I've lived a life of service, and to the extent that I've tried to do everything I can to help people, you never know if you're going to get that back. You just don't know. You put it out there and you hope it comes back. Well, it came back big time today. Both men will be taken into custody January 5th. Muriel Clare, WGN News. And both men received a two-year prison sentence. While well, high-profile conventions pulling out of McCormick Place one after the other, Mayor Daley thinks there's plenty of blame to go around, saying today he's been meeting with members of the Metropolitan Pier and Exposition Authority to get things back on track. We have to look at everyone and say, put, every, put all, everything on the table and find out what is happening here. If we keep raising the cost here, McCormick Place will be an empty shell. Now the conventions that have recently pulled out of McCormick Place do blame it on the high cost of labor at that venue. It's not your typical billboard that's up on the south side right now catching the eyes of motorists and pedestrians. It's the beginning of an advertising campaign with the message to those who shoot and kill young people. WGN's Antoine Lewis live at 67th and Ashland with more on the man in the church behind the endeavor. Antoine. Absolutely, Mark. M Father Michael Flager and the St. Sabina community are the ones behind the billboards, and they're saying they're taking an aggressive step to further protect Chicago's children. Take a look. Billboards up all over the place in Chicago offering a $5,000 reward to encourage Chicago residents to turn in people involved in gun violence against the city's children. Now, St. Sabina has placed 20 of these across the city at a cost of $100 apiece, paid for, they say, through church donations. And they are hoping the appeal of cash, that $5,000, breaks through the code of silence that communities sometimes can have. You cannot shoot our children and think you're going to go away from it. And we cannot let people think they can shoot and get off. So if it takes $5,000, it takes a bad economy, it takes Christmas coming up and people looking for money, whatever it takes, we want to send a message. We want people caught. We want people arrested who shoot or kill our children. Now, the billboards will be in place for about two months, and this one that you're looking at here at 67th and Ashland is because of a uh, shooting incident that happened here. The locations of the billboards, the church says, have been in direct correlation to other incidents where violence against children, gun violence against children, has in fact taken place. Now, as far as that reward, how that goes, 
anyone that will be eligible to get that, it would be determined upon information that was passed and can be passed anonymously that leads to the arrest and the conviction of someone who the police have determined, and the courts rather, have determined that is in fact a perpetrator of violence against the city's children. We'll of course have more again tonight at 9 o'clock. For now, we are live on the south side. Antoine Lewis, WGN News. Okay, Antoine, thank you. The Chicago police sergeant accused of stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from union coffers may have stolen more than previously believed. Prosecutors told the judge today that John Palahowski laundered about a million bucks from the Chicago Police Sergeants Association, using the money for everything from steak dinners to gambling trips to Vegas, even a second home. His defense attorney, though, telling a different story. They're both, uh, you know, make a nice living, are certainly entitled to go on a vacation every now and then, and, and I don't think there's any exorbitant amount of gambling losses that anybody's going to be able to substantiate. Palahuski is right now free after posting a 10% of a $350,000 bond. Two Chicago men accused of plotting an attack on a Danish newspaper may also have links to a terror attack in India. 170 people were killed in the attack in Mumbai last November. The Chicago Tribune reporting tonight that David Coleman Headley may have scouted locations for that attack. Those missions were reportedly funded by Tarahara Rana, both men from the Chicago area, and both already facing charges that they plotted an attack on a Danish newspaper office that printed a controversial cartoon involving the prophet Muhammad. Disturbing final words from a political fundraiser who took his own life before ever getting to testify against ex-governor Rod Blagojevich. Chris Kelly overdosed on pills two months ago. You may remember that. New details revealed in a police report say shortly before he died, Kelly told his girlfriend, quote, tell them they won. It's not clear who Kelly was referring to, but federal prosecutors had been pressuring him to testify against Blagojevich in his corruption trial. Mayor Daley says investigators are rightfully looking into how late Chicago School Board President Michael Scott spent money from his taxpayer-financed expense account. Daley again praised Scott, saying he gave so much of his time that the week before his death, he must have seen at least 25 organizations as he worked tirelessly to improve the lives of children. And again, I mean, you, you, it's hard to replace someone like that who was like he was on a mission uh, his entire life strictly for the schools. I mean, I've never seen anyone that committed uh, in regards to the school system. And the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office ruled Scott's death last week a suicide. The Chicago Tribune reported Scott used his school board credit card to pay for a trip to Copenhagen to lobby for bringing the 2016 Olympics to Chicago. He had already been paying back that money. Also, the Chicago Board of Education says it will hire a former federal prosecutor to investigate how all board members use their expense accounts. Former Vice President Al Gore was in town to promote his latest book, but not not everyone was glad to see him. Al Gore is trying to pass a carbon tax to transfer wealth from this country to the rest of the world. He's Tea Party activists protested outside the downtown Borders Books and Music Store where Gore appeared today to sign copies of his book, Our Choice, A Plan to Solve the Climate Crisis. It picks up where an inconvenient truth left off. The protesters chose the Gore book signing to highlight their opposition to carbon mandates that they claim will cost taxpayers and families more than $200 billion a year. Notre Dame star quarterback taking some hits on and off the field. The South Bend Tribune reporting Jimmy Clausen was punched in the eye last weekend, leaving a bar. Source told the paper a man outside the bar pushed Clausen's date. Clausen pushed back. The man then apparently landed a punch to Clausen's face. The two began to wrestle. Police were called. No report was filed. Notre Dame head coach Charlie Weiss says Clausen will start against Stanford for the final game coming this weekend. Well, it looks like Illinois may not be the only state to impeach a governor in 2009. Next, hearings open in South Carolina that could lead to the ouster of Mark Stanford over his affair with a woman in South America. And it was nothing but smiles and hugs high above the earth today as the crew of the shuttle Atlantis gets ready to come back home. And here's Tom Skelly. Well, Lourdes, we have some pretty good rains work, working their way into the Chicago area. They stand a very real chance of being the heaviest around here in perhaps a month with over a half an inch, perhaps up to an inch of rain in many areas before they taper to showers. And a couple of snow flurries still on for late tomorrow night and Thursday morning. That's Thanksgiving morning. But 50s will be back Saturday and cold air still on tap next week. Will it snow with that as December opens? We'll have details plus the weekend forecast coming up. 
watching WGN Evening News with Mark Sapelsa, Lourdes Duarte, and Tom Skilling. This is Chicago's very own WGN Evening News. You answered all my questions about cancer, even ones I didn't know I had. You drove my dad to the doctor so I could still work. You gave me a wig I wasn't embarrassed to wear. You found us a place to stay near the hospital. You unraveled my mother's medical bills. You helped us find the most advanced treatment. Having cancer is hard. Finding help isn't. Thank you, American Cancer Society. I never knew all you do. Thank you. Call us anytime. Decisions, decisions. Which beautiful prepared meal tonight? <gasps> Roasted chicken recipe? Okay, savory rice and lamb stew. <laughs> You're right. Tonight is a beef stew kind of night. You've made another fine choice. Look at those beefy chunks all packed with protein, the real vitamin-rich vegetables, the wholesome grains. And you think you're getting spoiled, but it's so good for you, too. Beneful prepared meals. Another healthful, flavorful Beneful. This is a Honda Pilot, and this is the Chevy Traverse. It has more cargo space than Pilot, and Traverse beats Honda on highway gas mileage, too more fuel efficient, and 30% more room. Maybe Traverse can carry that stuff too. Now during the Chevy Red Tag event, get an 09 Traverse with 0% APR for 72 months. See red and save green now at your local Chevy dealer. WGN News is sponsored in part by Empire Today. We added three rooms. I added one more. We added two, and they look great. It's Empire's amazing add-a-room event. Buy one room of carpet and get additional rooms for $50 each. Shop at home and choose quality name brand carpet with no payments for a year. Buy one room of carpet and get additional rooms for $50 each. The more rooms you add, the more you save. Call today. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Today. WGN Evening News. Highly unusual ending to a story out of Kentucky. Authorities say a census worker found hanging from a tree staged his death to make it look like a homicide. Bill Sparkman was found dead in September. At the time, he was nude, gagged, and bound, and had the word fed written on his chest. Many speculated that it was an anti-government sentiment, but police now say Sparkman manipulated the scene to conceal suicide. Sparkman had recently taken out two life insurance policies that did not pay out for suicide. Something happened today that will seem terribly familiar to us in Illinois. In South Carolina today, legislators take the first steps toward possible impeachment of Governor Mark Sanford. In June, Sanford snuck out of the state for several days to meet his mistress in Argentina. At the time, he told his staff members he was going to take a hike in the Appalachian Trail for the weekend. Sanford had been under intense scrutiny to resign since admitting to the affair. Governor also is facing 37 civil charges following a three-month state ethics probe. His lawyer says the governor hasn't done anything that rises to the standard of impeachment. An important meeting at the White House today between leaders from two of the world's biggest and most industrialized nations. President Obama welcomed Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh to Washington today. The two discussed the country's alliances going forward, saying it will beat one of the defining relationships of the 21st century. At the heart of the talks was terrorism. Both leaders agreed to work even closer on sharing information between law enforcement and intelligence agencies. Our core goal is to achieve peace and security for all peoples in the region, not just one country or the other. Now, the president also noted that it's not the United States' job to intervene in India's problems with Pakistan. In other topics, the two leaders sidestepped questions about reducing greenhouse gas emissions and also vowed to work closer on economic issues. Calling for a group hug with former roommates, astronaut Nicole Stott said goodbye today to the International Space Station. She's been there the past three months. Now she's looking forward to going home to her husband, seven-year-old son. Stott's returning to Earth with the crew of the space shuttle Atlantis who've uh, finished the mission on the space station. They'll be spending Thanksgiving in space with uh, meals of chicken fajita, beef brisket, sweet and sour pork, no turkey, and all the trimmings. But uh, Commander Charles Hobos says that's not the important thing to him. 
you know, Thanksgiving isn't all about what you eat. It's the people you spend it with. And and uh, this has become my second family. Of course, I have my uh, my main family back home. Uh, but these guys have been, uh, and, and now Nicole, have been uh, incredible to work with. And uh, we're just going to have a great time. Atlantis and the space station crews closed the hatches after saying goodbye, and the shuttle will undock before dawn tomorrow. Touchdown set for Friday. That was one cool hug. Oh, <laughs> loved it. Hug well, <laughs> Chicago history sold for parts. Yeah, up next, a tearful day at Kitty Land, where auctioneers sold off what's left of the now closed, once popular suburban amusement park. And big news for new parents today as a massive crib recall is announced. Which models are being labeled potentially deadly? That's coming up. Tonight, bang for your holiday buck. As you're making your list and checking it twice, learn three rules that will save you cash. Tonight on WGN News at 9. All the news, we're showing you the newest gadgets on the market just in time for holiday shopping. And the big day is finally here. All the details that you picked for the WGN Dream Wedding will come together. We'll be with Sarah and Ray as they get ready all the way through their I Do's live tomorrow morning, 5 to 9. Seriously, your tongue's not gonna stick. It was just a movie. Really? <sighs> okay. That is not smart. What is smart is shopping at CarMax. By thoroughly inspecting, reconditioning, and guaranteeing our used cars, we can offer new car-like quality at used car prices. Careful, it's hot. Thanks. Now more than ever, the smart choice is CarMax. The way car buying should be. Don't miss Menard's big after Thanksgiving sale. Doors open at 6 a.m. Friday for big five-hour deals. You don't have to spend a lot to get a lot. Keep warm with this cuddly blanket in assorted colors, only $2.99 each. A Master Force 4-volt lithium cordless screwdriver is $14.98. A 300-amp jump starter is $29.98. Assorted DVDs choose from over 50 titles, only $1.99 each. Get thousands of great deals during the big five-hour sale this Friday at Menard's. Don't miss out. Jumpstart a life. Donate your car, boat, or RV to Volunteers of America. We offer shelter from the storms of life for the homeless. Volunteers of America, help me find myself again. We never give up on at-risk kids. We serve the disadvantaged and find affordable housing for the elderly. Volunteers of America helps me live independently. Jumpstart a life. Donate your car, boat, or RV to Volunteers of America. Get a great tax deduction. Call 800-989-0883. This is the time of year when Honda dealers are making great deals. You have your holiday traditions, we have ours. See your Honda dealer today for special leasing or low financing on a new Honda. Well, it is the oldest amusement park in the Chicagoland area, but tonight Kitty Land is no more. The final pieces were auctioned off today, and WGN's Tom Negevin is here with that story. Very sad. A very sad story, Lourdes. You know, for a lot of people, this place has been around since 1929. Countless memories have been made there. While those live on, Kitty Land is gone, and no one's taking it harder than the park's first family. Thank you, have a nice day. Thank you, you too. The last line for tickets at Kitty Land, this time for an auction. Everything is up for grabs, from the bumper cars to the carousels, and you can sum up the owner's feelings in a single word. Sad. It wasn't supposed to end this way. Kitty Land had been sold and was set to be relocated when the buyer defaulted and the sale fell through. So the popular park goes on the block, piece by piece. Lot six. 
box of bowling pins. Sad. It's hard. It was hard to come into work today. This is harder for me than the last day when we closed to the public. That day was September 27th when Kittyland fell victim to a disagreement among its founding family on the best use for this land. Today, folks whose families have loved this place for generations came hoping to take a piece of it home. Our daughters came here and our three and a half year old is going to miss Kitty Land. I haven't told her yet that it's closed. Even for the owners, that news is still sinking in. So $200, Bill Robinson, my good friend from Ohio, number 99, the buyer. Poignant image there. And for the owners, there is some good news, though, coming out of that auction. We have it here. The carousel went for $355,000 to a Westmont business owner who plans to refurbish it, 355000 Little Dipper roller coaster sold for 33000 That went to Six Flags Gurney, which plans to put it in the kitty section, hopefully, they say, in 2010. So in a way, even after all these years and all this turmoil, kitty land lives on. Oh, it's hard to see everybody crying. It's hard so for upset. a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, all right. Thank you, Tom. Change, sure. Wonderful story. Thank you. All right, Mark. Florida Tom. Thanks. A warning tonight from the U.S. Public Interest Research Group, PERG. Check out the toys for hazards before giving them to your children for the holidays. The Consumer Advocate Group says, as they do every year, but uh, it's a good reminder nonetheless. Watch out for the small parts, loud sounds, especially for the uh, very, very small uh, youngsters, soft plastics, lead contamination, choking the number one cause of toy-related deaths and injuries. The Consumer Group also says, if a toy can fit in a toilet paper tube, then it's too small for children to play with. Youngsters six and older have been shown to suffer, uh, for example, hearing loss because of the loud toys. And lead can cause learning disabilities, seizures, coma, and in extremes, even death. Joining us now in the studio is director of Illinois PERG, Brian Imus, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Brought along some toys to uh, show us exactly what you're talking about here. Well, that's right. Uh, so we released our 24th annual Trouble in Toyland report. These are examples of some of the toys that we were able to find on store shelves this year. This is actually a good example where it doesn't have the proper warning label to let parents know that it's a choking hazard. There's actually a piece here that's small enough to sit uh, to fit right into this choke tube test. That, that comes with it? Is that this, what it is? This actually yeah. comes with this. That, that's actually a choking hazard. This isn't something that a child under the age of three should be playing with, but there isn't a warning label like there should be on this particular Got toy. It. Uh, th this right here is an example of a toy that we tested for toxic phthalates. Okay. It's a toxic chemical we know is dangerous to children. Congress pa banned the use of phthalates in toys this year. We found this with 72,000 parts per million of phthalates on it. Is it the white part or the plastic part? It's the plastic part. This actually was how it was tested at the lab. They had to cut it Got so it. we could determine that it actually had phthalates in it. What do we have here? Well, big wrecks. That's right. After uh, the last couple of years of record recalls because of lead in children's toys, we're still finding toys that contain lead. This was an example. You wouldn't think so. It's a cloth baby book, but inside when we tested it, 1,900 parts per million of lead, much, much higher than was legally allowed. Now, here's a question for you. You showed how this, which is your uh, official measure, could fit in there. Is that the same as the toilet paper tube? That's right. Uh, I wouldn't expect parents to have something like this yeah. laying around their homes. This right. is what the CPSC uses. This is what parents can use in their own home. So once again, I can drop right through That's it. That's right. There you go. If it fits in here, it's not something that a child under the age of three should be playing with. It's important to remember it's, it's, it's extremely dangerous, and 13 children died from choking-related hazards over the last two years. You know, it, probably the biggest warning, I would imagine, you know, I, I know it's not summertime, it's not garage sale time, but that is where a lot of these toys are sometimes picked up and people haven't heard in years or uh, maybe a half a year that something like this has been recalled, and it just serves as another reminder. A absolutely, and we're providing this year, uh, going live, is a uh, mobile uh, tool that parents can use on their smartphones when they're shopping that'll give them uh, tips, examples of toys to look out for so they can actually be using that on their cell phone while they're shopping this holiday season. Great. Perg, thank you, Brian. Appreciate thank that. You. We contacted the makers of these three toys for comment. Uh, only Hasbro got back to us saying all their products meet safety standards and accusations that their products, all the pieces or sound levels are unsafe for the uh, ages indicated is false, they said. A release from the Toy Industry Association said uh, they welcome the increased attention and notes that they are continuously reviewing and updating safety standards as well. Lourdes? Well, Mark, it's the largest crib recall in U.S. history. More than 2.1 million drop-sized cribs have been targeted by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. CNN's Nicole Collins has a story. There was never any 
warnings about these cribs. Robert Sirigliano says five years ago, his six-month-old son suffocated after getting stuck between the mattress and the side railing of a drop-side crib. He hoped it was something other families would never have to endure. But now, serious safety concerns involving a different crib manufacturer have led to a voluntary recall of some drop-side cribs by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. The recall includes more than 2.1 million drop-side cribs made by Storkraft, including about 147,000 with a Fisher Price logo. The cribs were sold in the U.S. and Canada between January 1993 and October 2009. CPSC says the cribs drop-side can detach unexpectedly Expectedly and create a space between the crib wall and the adjacent mattress, and children can become trapped. The agency says it is aware of 15 entrapments, four resulting in suffocation. Some argue dropside cribs should be taken off the shelves altogether. One state lawmaker in New York worked to do just that, successfully banning their sale in his county. Don't risk your most precious treasure, your child, uh, and get rid of the dropside crib. The CPSC urges parents to stop using the recalled products immediately and contact Storkraft for a free repair kit that converts each crib from a drop side to a standard fixed side crib. In Washington, I'm Nicole Collins. Tainted milk in China leads to a death sentence. Two executed after six babies died and look at how China's improved product safety since then. The naked truth about Turkey. Folks at PETA put on another eye-catching protest for the holidays. BP Gasoline with Invigorate. They have a unique formula that helps cars run younger for longer. BP Gasoline with Invigorate. All grades of BP Gasoline have Invigorate. When used continuously, it can help clean and protect engines against harmful deposits, sludge, and corrosion. To help your car run younger for longer, try BP Gasoline with Invigorate. My name is Ram, and my tank is full. I'm all brawn, all brain, built not to last, but to outlast. Not to achieve, but to overachieve. My tank is full. I carry a full payload, and I deliver the goods without fail. My name is Ram, and my tank is full. During the year-end wrap-up, get 0% financing plus $1,000 cash allowance on 2010 Ram 1500. Decorated homes are a holiday season delight. If you think your decorations are prize worthy, they could be. Enter the Chicago Tribune's free holiday homes contest and you could be the winner of a $1,000 gift card from the Home Depot. Just visit TribuneHolidayHomes.com to browse decorating tips and pictures. And then upload your best holiday decoration picture by December 12th for a chance to win. Let us make your holidays brighter this year. Holiday Homes is proudly sponsored by the Home Depot. We're cutting the cost of Yuletide. Taking the Bob Humbug out of your budget. And amping up the merry in your Christmas. We're lowering prices on everything you need to make your home and the season more festive. Oh, yeah. Adding more jingle to your pockets and more happy to your holidays. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. These are some of the stories making headlines around the world. The southern provinces of the Philippines now under emergency rule. As security forces unearthed more bodies pushing the death toll to 46 in some of the deadliest election violence in the nation's history. As many as 20 journalists have been killed. In China, two people executed for their part in a tainted milk scandal that killed at least six babies. Another 300,000 people were sick. Since then, China has tightened regulations and increased inspections on producers and exporters in cooperation with the U.S., which has noticed a drop in the number of product recalls on Chinese exports. In Spain, 34 arrests, all believed to be members of a youth group associated with the outlawed Basque separatist group, ETA, as it's known, is classified as a terrorist organization by the U.S., Spain, and the European Union. The group is blamed for more than 800 deaths since 1970. 
And Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad steps off a plane in Bolivia. This is his second stop in a three-nation visit through South America. He was in Brazil yesterday and is headed to Venezuela next. Ahmadinejad is working to bolster political ties as he tries to counter U.S. and European efforts to curtail Iran's nuclear program. And that is a look around the world. All right, Tim, everyone's chatting about Turkey Day and the possibility of a flurry or three, huh? Yeah, and that's about it. I'll tell you what's going to happen. Tomorrow night late and the first hours of Thanksgiving Day Thursday, that's day after tomorrow, freeze level comes down to about 800 feet. Uh, rule of thumb is you can get snowflakes to survive through about a thousand feet of above freezing area. So that means a couple of snow flurries will come down. But, you know, some folks have written and said, hey, can we expect any travel problems? Is this going to stick? No. No way. Uh, temperatures will be above freezing during the entire event. It's problematic whether we'll get the flurries down to the surface, but at least a possibility. And it would mark only the second time that we've had snow flurries uh, so far this season. The first time was back in October. Tell you one thing we did not worry about today uh, were flurries. And in fact, a pretty good rain is coming across the area right now. It's produced some big amounts downstate. Uh, southeast winds are blowing with gusto and they'll shift around to the southwest by morning and blow that way tomorrow with 50 at O'Hare right now and 51 at Midway Airport. Those are both above normal readings. This is the third consecutive week. 21 consecutive days every day has been above normal. What a month this has been. 50 at the moment down in the southern suburbs. Across the region you see from Peoria right down to East St. Louis has been in the 50s today. But what we want you to notice is the rainfall because this is the same weather system pressing in on the area tonight. Right in time for rush hour. Peoria has had almost three quarters of an inch, two thirds of an inch. Moline, East St. Louis and Springfield are close to a half an inch of rain. And temperatures uh, are basically in the upper 40s to around 50 or in the low 50s as you can see. This is downstate Decatur, our weather bug camera there. You see the rains that are going on there. And Springfield's been uh, wet today, too, as this system wends its way through the Midwest. Here it is, started 24 hours ago out in Nebraska, and it's been proceeding eastward. And there's almost a convective or a vertical build look to this. It looks kind of like a springtime precipitation event, though the cloud tops, as bright as the radar returns, we'll show you in a moment, uh, look are only about 20,000 feet tall, but that's more than enough to make these big rains, and there's where the Doppler shows the heaviest rains have come down. Well, here it is, our three-dimensional radar, and you can see the brighter colors right here. This is where the clouds tower uh, through the atmosphere, the tallest columns of moisture, so it really is raining under those, and there's a nice little curl to this thing. So this is a fairly well-organized uh, little system started with a 200 mile an hour jet stream right out here late last week and this thing has made its way across the continent and now is coming up into our area but as we animate, animate this full uh, uh, hemispheric view look at this storm out here in the Gulf of Alaska there's warm air that it's pushing northward into western Canada so that buckles the jet stream up into that area then it crashes down on us and that's how we set up a cool Thanksgiving Here's the way it looks. A little system coming through right now, but the wind's crashing southward, and here's this lobe of cold air. But it takes up residence here only two days. Uh, you see how the warm air is pushing the jet back south again, or north again, and I think by Saturday, we could be in the 50s once again after a couple of cool days. Uh, and that would be very much like those beautiful days we enjoyed last weekend. So 6 o'clock tonight, the model correctly has the rain over the area. It rains pretty steadily for about four to five hours then scatters to showers later tonight when winds will have switched around to the southwest. And that's how they'll blow during the day tomorrow with little showers in the air from time to time and see the snow starting to show up as the cool air comes into Wisconsin and Iowa. This forecast extends the view a couple hours more. So here's our load tonight with uh, cold air coming down the backside. Big high pressure here. Winds blowing in broadly from the north. So gusty northwest winds, and there's the snow that mixes in on the back side of the system. And you can see how these little snow elements rotate in our direction toward Thanksgiving morning. But uh, by the afternoon, we'll be back to little rain showers again. Humidity, high dew points here. That's wrapping and making the rain tonight. But look how chilly the air is out west, as evidenced by the low dew points, which give you an idea where the nighttime temperatures can go on a clear night. So. Uh, we've got some cool air coming in, and it's about time. The month is one of the, in the 10% warmest Novembers on record in 139 years here. So it's been a bonus month, and a little cool weather is 
to be expected. So periods of rain, some heavy downpours in spots before changing to lighter, more sporadic showers late tonight. Low temperature down to 40 and east winds at 6 to 16 shift southwest by morning. Cloudy, breezy, cooler tomorrow. Several showers, high 47. Winds 11 to 22 from the southwest. Then rain showers could mix with a couple of snowflakes late tomorrow night. Breezy, colder, low 35. You're not going to get snow to stick at that temperature at all. And then uh, Thanksgiving, cloudy, blustery, cool. Maybe a few flurries in the morning. They'll be wet and could even be mixed with raindrops and a couple of light, a couple of uh, rain showers in the afternoon, but cold ones and a high of only 39 Thanksgiving mm -hmm. Day. But we jump back to 50. We'll come back and tell you more about that on the seven day in a little bit That's on Saturday. Season. All right. Yeah. It's nice. It'll be our Thanksgiving gift. It is. Okay. It is. Thank Good day to done. sit inside and eat turkey and then <laughs> celebrate outside Thursday. You know, all Saturday, right. walk it all off. All Perfect. Right, okay, guys. <laughs> Shopping stories coming up. Speaking of the holidays, a creative push to spend money in a small town. And just how many folks will be trying to snag a deal in between office meetings, cyber shopping at work? How many of you do it? Turns out about 32% of you do. We're going to find out more about it. Is it out of control? That's coming up next. Hey there, I'm Marcus Lashock outside Tribune Tower. WGN Radio's John Williams heard that Chicago is going to spend $100,000 on a Christmas tree. He said he'd do one better, set one up for free, and the people's tree is all lit up. We'll tell you about it coming up. WGN News is sponsored by Potawatomi Bingo Casino. Slots, over 100 table games, and plenty of room. There's no better place to hit it big than Potawatomi Bingo Casino. What will you do if you win? Oh, nice. We didn't think you were coming this year. I wouldn't miss it. traditions we have ours get special APR financing as low as 0.9% on new civics see your Honda dealer today hey it's Eddie and Jobo Eddie tell me something that costs the same today as it did 20 years ago that's impossible well for some United Auto Insurance customers their rates haven't changed for 20 years call United Auto Insurance at 773-202-5000 to get top quality insurance at the lowest possible rate call United Auto Insurance today the town and country all the space you need to get you to the space you want to the Chrysler Town & Country, the only minivan to offer a no-charge DVD entertainment system and maintenance for three years or 36,000 miles. Well, the mayor of a southern Illinois town is taking a personal approach to help out his local economy. This is Belleville Mayor Mark Eckert. He wrote a letter to everyone in town asking them to shop locally during the holiday season. To help drive the point home, Eckert is going door to door delivering that letter, each one by hand. Local sales tax revenues in Belleville have been down for the past two years, and the mayor is hoping people realize that tax dollars keep police and firefighters on the streets. A lot of people just didn't realize how important they're doing business in the town in which they live and work, how that equates to public service. Now, local business leaders are applauding the mayor's efforts. Some say business is already picking up for local small businesses in that area. And while they're shopping locally in Belleville, many of us will be making our purchases while sitting in front of the computer. Sometimes we do it at work. It turns out a good percentage of those online shoppers will be spending money while on the clock at work. And joining us now to talk about is Michael Irwin from CareerBuilder.com. You've actually done a study on this, and I gotta admit, 
I hope my boss is not listening, but I think we've all done it, though. We've all done the online shopping while we're at work. Definitely, and I think you still can. It's just policing yourself to make sure that when you're online, you're also getting your work done, because right now in this economy, they're focused on productivity, and they want to see those numbers up. So you can shop and do everything you want in your lunch hour or on your break, but make sure you're getting your work done. When is it going too far? Like, when are you crossing the line? Well, we found that almost 60% of um, workers go online and do um, non-work-related activity, and and some of them say, 20% say they're spending an hour or more doing personal stuff. So that's probably too an much. An hour or more. That's, that, that's way too much. Unless it's on your lunch hour, that's your time to do what you want to do. And employers understand mm -hmm. that. But just make sure that when you're working and you're supposed to be working, you're actually showing some productivity. You always hate it when you get caught. Your boss is right behind you and you're like, ooh, I'm going to shop. Exactly. <laughs> and it's interesting that 50% of employers say mm -hmm. that they are now monitoring internet and um, email. 50%. So you really have to be careful because half of them out there know what you're doing. Okay. And I know that some of the num you've got numbers here as to how many people have actually been fired. 20% of people have been fired for using internet at work and then 5% have been fired while holiday shopping. What have those stories been like? Well, people who have been fired because they were shopping Employers online? are going to be a little more lenient. Um, they don't want to fire you because you're shopping online. Mm -hmm. Again, it's really police yourself. If you can balance your work and your shopping, have at it. Is it likely our bosses are probably doing it too? Yeah. <laughs> Mine will be watching tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You. We appreciate you being here. Mark? I promise I'm not shopping. It's Facebook <laughs> and Twitter right here. <laughs> can there really be a substitute for turkey on Thanksgiving? Up next, you can bet the folks at PETA sure think there is. And they picked a, uh, well, another creative way to get their message across to people this week. And here's Gerard McLennan, who's got a... Uh, Message for us from 6 o'clock CLTV. What's the topic tonight, Gerard? Hey, Mark, I think I'm going to get fired, man, because I'm on eBay right now. Tis the season to be shopping online. Tonight, we're going to talk about the convenience and the dangers of shopping online. I've got Diane Yamazaki with me and Gail Marks Jarvis. Gerard McClendon live tonight at 6 o'clock on CLTV. WGN TV presents the McDonald's Thanksgiving Parade with host Robin Baumgarten and Paul Conrad. Join Honorary Grand Marshal Ronald McDonald, Curious George, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, and Giant Bob the Builder and Paddington Bear Balloons. Brought to you by McDonald's of Chicago Land at Northwest Indiana and Case New Holland. To purchase VIP experience tickets and for more information, log on to ChicagoFestivals.org. The McDonald's Thanksgiving Parade. Thanksgiving Day at 8 on WGN, Chicago CW. Medicare beneficiaries, your dental health is an important part of your overall health. HealthSpring now offers plans with dental benefits not covered by Original Medicare. Just listen to what these HealthSpring members have to say. But it's there for me, for cleanings and routine x-rays and stuff like that. HealthSpring has plans that offer benefits including no or low monthly plan premium, dental coverage, and prescription drug coverage through the gap. Call today, 1-866-419-1127 and learn more. HealthSpring is the best thing that has happened to me because it keeps me healthy. HealthSpring's dental coverage will keep you smiling. With HealthSpring, you have a choice of plans that provide better benefits at a lower cost. Look at what Medicare paying compared to what HealthSpring paying. Man, you see a whole big difference. Call today and find out how you can get more for Medicare and more from life. 1-866-419-1127. HealthSpring proudly participates in the Illinois Cares Rx program. Don't forget now. Tell them Willis sent you. Save up to 80% buying Factory Direct. The jewelry exchange imports diamonds direct, manufactures their own jewelry, and won't be undersold. Key to your heart pendants are $79. Tunnel of Love tennis bracelets start at $299. Larger sizes are just $299 per carat. Three stone rings are $159, one carat $599, and diamond studs are $399 per carat. Only the Jewelry Exchange guarantees the jewelry they make to appraise for double. That's right, double. Buy Factory Direct and Save, the Jewelry Exchange nationwide and online. Now during the GMC holiday event, Get our best offer of the year, 0% APR for 72 months on a 2009 GMC Sierra. This is Chicago's very own WGN Evening News. 
Well, Chicago's largest one-day food drive was held today at the Merchandise Mart. The 25th annual Sharing It Day kicks off a holiday food drive benefiting the Greater Chicago Food Depository. This year's theme was One City, One Food Drive. Organizers say they want to show the importance of Chicagoans' efforts to support the Food Depository's 600-member food pantries, soup kitchens, and the shelters. They serve nearly 90,000 hungry people each week. So you've got your turkey or picking one up in the next day, but then what? What do you do? While many people have figured it out on their own, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. And who better to ask than the people at Butterball? Earlier today, a turkey hotline supervisor joined our midday show to gab about gobblers. She gave us some great tips for saving money this Thanksgiving. The best way to save some money is maybe have some guests bring a dish or two. Okay, also, true. we've developed recipes this year at the Butterball Test Kitchens that use items that are probably on your shelf or in the pantry. Well, for a list of those recipes, or if you have any questions about your turkey, you can call the hotline at 1-800-BUTTERBALL. You can also visit them on the web at butterball.com this year. They even have a Twitter feed and text message alerts. And not everybody, though, in the mood for turkey on Thanksgiving, especially members of PETA. Every year they do something and they're doing just about anything to convince you to change up your holiday meal. A couple of uh, young women dressed up in sort of like pilgrim outfits hoping to draw attention away from the gobblers. Instead they want people to eat veggies and tofu this Thanksgiving. Where turkeys are cooped up in their own waste. They're kept in cages so small that they can't even turn around or reproduce naturally. And luckily we've got tofurkey, which is just one of the many great alternatives that are available to us today. Awfully chilly out there. PETA claims more than 300 million turkeys are killed in the U.S. every year. 40 million of those are killed for Thanksgiving dinners alone. To eat this turkey on Thanksgiving, you might need an ID and a designated driver required because it is a 100 proof marinated vodka flavored turkey. You can choose between such flavors as peach, apple, cherry. They call it drunk turkey. Served at O'Casey's Tavern in New York City. The bird does contain uh, one, ounce of, uh, one ounce of alcohol per bite. And for those who feel a little tipsy after eating the turkey, the owners are offering, yes, free taxi rides home. Like you need, you need uh, the booze and the turkey. You're really going to be really tired. I they think, literally, after that. they say more than tired. They literally say after that one, fall. you may be, yeah, yeah, you'll need that ride. I think. All right. Sure, uh, we may get a flake or two in the next couple of days, which might just add to the atmosphere. That's right. Tom Skilling's here to tell might us a little indeed. bit more about it. And I don't know, Tom, did you see the story about the I did. turkey? I did, and it occurs to me if you have an open candle there, you know, you could transform <laughs> it into a substitute fireplace. You know, as the turkey. Flaming turkey. Flame. Absolutely. Maybe a new dish, right? <laughs> Flaming turkey. Uh, that is, that's an incredible story. Hey, the weather has been incredible around here. Uh, three weeks of above normal temperatures. But look at the rain that's predicted to come into the area. It's pouring in many parts of the metro area now. This weather system, you see the piles of clouds right there on the three-dimensional radar, has a history of producing three quarters of an inch or more of rain in certain stations, uh, down certain areas downstate. It will rain steadily with that system about four to five hours, then taper to showers late tonight, lighter and more sporadic, and they continue tomorrow and tomorrow night and here's what happens over the next 10 days you'll see why we may get a couple of flakes down to the surface tomorrow night by late in the day tomorrow it's cooler but there'll be enough trapped uh, warmth beneath the clouds that they, it should keep it liquid it's tomorrow night when the core of that cool air comes over us into the first hours of thanksgiving morning as we get a lobe of cold air in only to see it quickly exit the area and strong 30 mile per hour wind gusts uh, from the south on Saturday propel the warmth back into the area under partly sunny skies. Saturday looks like a winter. Then a cold front comes through with showers and more clouds Sunday and begins a cool off that may or may not develop this big uh, upper low that you're seeing right there. We've had a number of models. They've kind of backed off the snow forecast early next week, but keep the cold coming on the latest runs. But that doesn't mean the latest runs are always right. And look what happens by Thursday next week. Uh, we are really in the chilly air, so far and away, the cold that follows this seven-day forecast is uh, far more formidable. And of course, by then, Tuesday and on next week, we're in December. And that first week could be cold and it features some snow. We'll be updating that at nine. But rain is in the forecast uh, tonight, uh, downpours, showers 
storms tomorrow. Uh, some flurries in the morning, real wet things that don't stick because it's above freezing, no travel problems. Thursday morning, rain showers in the afternoon, then partly sunny uh, on Friday and Saturday. So it'll be cool Friday, but mild and windy on Saturday and maybe a shower late in the weekend again. All in all, not a bad deal this time of the year. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. See you tonight, guys. All right. It's uh, against the law to smoke in bars and restaurants in Illinois, as we all know. But you don't have to look hard to find a place that's happy to break the rules. I lose customers to Indiana for smoking. I might as well let them smoke. I'm going to pay the fine anyway. Yeah, tonight on the News at 9, Jackie Bang finds several Chicagoland bars where lighting up is not only accepted, it's commonplace. She'll tell us why they're allowed to get away with it and why they aren't likely to start following the law. Well, to locals, it's a comical mistake, but if you don't know your way around Rhea County in Tennessee, you could be in for some trouble. Home to the Watts Bar Nuclear Power Plant, Rhea County posts evacuation routes in case of an emergency. But at one intersection, two evacuation signs posted across from each other point in opposite directions. One leads out of town to safety, the other to a dead end. They come down this road and not for real familiar with the area. They would make a right turn, which would lead them nowhere. I noticed it right after they put them up. I said, somebody goofed. Yeah, that would happen to me, wouldn't it? The Tennessee Department of Transportation has been notified of the mistake and will correct it as soon as possible. Whoopsie. <laughs> Shocked by the cost of the city's holiday tree, a Chicago radio host says he can do better. Yeah, up next, our Marcus LaShock will join us from Freedom Plaza where they lit their first annual People's Tree right outside WGN Radio. still says they offer choices, but what does that really mean? Oh, step right up, folks, and get a tasty bundle. We got your home phone, your internet, and your TV. Or, um, I'd like mine with wireless phone service. Ooh, no, no, no. Ho, ho. Drop cable and choose any three from wireless phone service, high-speed internet, home phone with unlimited nationwide calling, or advanced TV starting under 100 a month. Switch and get up to $200 back in promotion cards from AT&T with other qualifying bundle plans. Get wireless on the nation's fastest 3G network. High-speed internet at home and on the go with unlimited access to the nation's largest Wi-Fi network. And access to more HD channels than cable. Call now to choose any three starting under $100 a month. Switch and get up to $200 back in promotion cards from AT&T with other qualifying bundle plans. Hey, buddy. Need to borrow my phone? <laughs> AT&T. Your world delivered. Jeep. Knowing reality isn't captured by a hidden camera. It doesn't come in episodes either. You see, I don't live to live through anyone, ever. So while everyone waits to see the next best this or an unbelievable that, here's the reality. There's no rerun when you're living in the now. So while you tune in, I'll be somewhere getting out. I live, I ride, I am Jeep. penny counts. So does every moment. Make the most of both this holiday season with great gifts at great prices from L.L. Bean. Closed captioning for WGN News is sponsored by Feldco, the window and door retailer of the year. Right now, buy one window and get one free. Call 866-4-FELDCO. The Big Tree. Christmas Tree Daily Plaza will be uh, lit tomorrow. Chicago actress and talk show host Bonnie Hunt doing the honors. Meantime, spurred by outrage over the cost of putting together the Daily Center Tree, WGN radio host John Williams has come up with an alternative. WGN's Marcus LeShock was among those on hand for the lighting of what they're calling the People's Tree. Marcus, what's this all about? That's right. It is the People's Tree. City of Chicago is spending $100,000 on a Christmas tree. This gentleman next to me, John Williams at WGN Radio, you thought that was a little bit crazy. Yeah, I mean, the gesture was nice. It's great to have a big city tree, and we don't want them not to. But when we heard hundred grand, I thought <laughs> me and my buddies and a case of old style could get that thing done for less. And 
Behold the tree. Right, you lit this today just a little while ago and yeah. braved the rain. Actually, a listener in Morris, Illinois said, hey, we'll give you a tree. Another guy said, I've got a truck. Another guy said, I've got a crane. Uh, another guy, Todd over here, came down from Kenosha, Wisconsin, said, I'll help you wire it up. It was all just an ad hoc volunteer army, and it was really fun. Now we're inviting people to uh, bring their own ornaments down, and whatever ornament you have, if you want us to put it on the tree, you know, right. we've got a nice hodgepodge. Yeah, I've seen everything from some funny stuff to people who have lost relatives up there right. on the street. Or have uh, uh, sons and daughters serving in Iraq or Afghanistan. Right. You know, if they can't be with you this holiday, you want them to be on our people's tree, uh, we've put them on there. All you have to do is drop them in the uh, Tribune Tower lobby. Right. And there was a good crowd out here today, people braving the weather. Uh, even uh, Governor Quinn I saw wandering around here. Yeah, you know, he was in the building anyway. And then he said he'd stick around. It ruined his suit, I think, but <laughs> it was just pouring rain on us. But the governor said, hooray. We sang a couple Christmas carols. We had to move it along because it was raining, but it worked. We had a good time. Were you shocked at how many people called in and said they were going to help you out with all this stuff? Right, because to me it was a lark. I said, I could do it, but I didn't think somebody was going to call in and go, I'll give you a tree. Let's see you do it. And then I realized how much work it was. I mean, I see why the city does make a lot of effort to do it, but it snowballed. Everybody got behind the tree. It was fun. Now, $100,000 to put up that tree. When you heard that figure, uh, what went through your head? You know, maybe manpower hours, maybe uh, I couldn't imagine how that cost 100 grand, particularly since their tree was donated, right? Uh -huh. So I just thought for 100 grand, we could do it for less, uh, although I really didn't intend to do it. Right. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think anybody give us a tree and it would kind of take on its own life, you know? Yeah, and you're calling it the people's tree, which you're a little worried about. Uh, yeah, it sounds it like a commie plot, doesn't right. it? This is not China's tree. This is our tree. I think we're going to change the name I'll next I'll be honest, year. I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> the listener's tree. It's okay? the black glasses, I think. It's the, less, it's the listener's tree, and it's working. Right. Well, yeah. thank you for coming on with the it's state. I'm really fun. disappointed that you took off your holiday sweater. I heard, that wait, you... no, best, best, yeah. Hurry. Can we throw that holiday sweater, sweater in here? here we got we got about 15 sweater. seconds. Yes. Uh, take I a was... look. Take a look at this. I mean, they just they just don't make them like this anymore. This John. is a holiday sweater. Yeah. I was wearing it, but it was wool, and it was getting smaller as the ceremony went on. Right. And hopefully, somebody donated that to you <laughs> as well. All right, John. Thank you very much. We got to send Christmas. it back to the Thanks. studio. Merry Christmas, John, from the 1979 yeah. sweater. Hey, Marcus, well, that's you, great. Let's yeah. make let's make it the viewer's tree. Can you guys part ways here so we can Maybe see the tree not. as we close out here? Take a camera shot of that. We, we need to yeah, see you it want to check you. out the tree? All right, we're yeah. going to check out the tree as we close out. Look at that. The Beautiful. people's tree. Nice job, John. Looks good. <laughs> Thanks, love guys. It. Love the lights, too. Nice job. After weeks of planning, the WGN Morning News Dream Wedding is almost here. Drum yeah. roll, please. Yeah, back in October, our viewers chose Sarah and Ray as lucky winners of our $50,000 Dream Wedding. The only hitch, they had to let our viewers choose all the details of that wedding. Yeah, from the dress to the tux to the flowers to the ring to the cake, you name it. You design this wedding, and tomorrow you're invited to see how it all turns out. Sarah and Ray will get married tomorrow morning at the Allerton Hotel Chicago. Join us from 6 to 9 for the WGN Dream Wedding, the WGN Morning News tomorrow. Oh, I'm ready to cry. All right, well, that's going to do it for us at 5. I'm Lourdes Dwork. Hey, quick shot of the uh, Pack 6 New Lenox Den 1 visiting there WGN Studios tonight as we say goodnight here at 5 o'clock. We'll see you tonight at 9. Thanks for watching. Four meals on the four dollars, that's a good deal. Steak burger, good, fresh meat. Oh, there's a little crispy edge. All the steaky juiciness comes out. Mm, your favorite steak burger meals and even chicken fingers. Four meals under four dollars. Steak and shake, life needs flavor. Are you planning to get back together with your husband? On December 18th, I will talk at lunch, dinner, brunch, snack time. A twist of fate. I recommend you both enter witness relocation. We'll force the Morgans back together. I can't commit to spending the rest of my life with my husband. I know exactly how you feel. Welcome to Wyoming. Yeah. Hugh Grant. Oh, God in heaven, I heard. Sarah Jessica Parker. I just packed a ton of underwear in a strapless gown. Same here. Did you hear about the Morgans? Yeah. December 18th. Kohl's After Thanksgiving sale starts this Friday at 4 a.m. And she plans to be the first in line. With over 300 early bird specials, she'll get amazing gifts at amazing prices. Like 60% off men's sweaters, 50 to 60% off sleepwear, an extra 20% off fine jewelry already 55 to 60% off, a digital camera for $59.99, and a portable TV for $69.99. Plus $10 Kohl's cash for every 50 spent. It's like getting paid to shop. Kohl's After Thanksgiving sale starts Friday at 4 a.m. Kohl's. Expect great things.
during the GMC Holiday Event. Get our best offer of the year. 0% APR for 72 months on a 2009 GMC Sierra. This Friday at Darwin Furniture, save 35 to 50%. Then take an additional 15% off our low sale prices at Darwin Furniture. News headlines and new gadgets on the market for the holidays. Sarah and Ray will get married live in our WGN Dream Wedding tomorrow at 5. And how are you this morning, Danny? Well, I didn't sleep very well last night, Ellen. <laughs> I had nightmares. <laughs> nightmares. <laughs> nightmares. <laughs> I dreamed I ate a five-pound marshmallow. <laughs> a five-pound marshmallow? Yeah, and when I woke up, my pillow was gone. <laughs> was gone. Pillow. 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 Alan? Yeah? You're starting to scare the crap out of me. Oh, oh this, this is uh, just a new hobby. Uh, Charlie, say hello to Danny O'Day. How do you do, Charlie? That's not a hobby. That's a cry for help. Oh, come on, Charlie, play along. So, Charlie, how did you sleep last night? With a woman, Alan. <laughs> Something you need to do before this gets out of hand. Wow. He's got a stick where I've got your hand. <laughs> Did you ask him if he wants to go to the movies with us? No. Why not? Because he's a ticking time bomb, and we don't want to be in the car with him when he goes off. <laughs> Come on, he's breaking my heart. Staying home all alone on a Friday night. Don't worry. You know how they say you can be alone but not lonely? Yeah. Well, Alan's kind of the opposite. He's always lonely, but he's never alone. <laughs> he's going through a tough time. Your brother should be surrounded by friends and family. My brother should be surrounded by a SWAT team. <laughs> Please, for me. Chelsea, we agreed that you only get one of those a month. Are you sure you want to waste it on Alan? Thanks for letting me tag along with you. This is really sweet. We're thrilled you could join us. Right, Charlie? Yippee, skippy. So have we picked a movie yet? Nope. Would you like to see La Poubelle et le Fromage at the New Art? Would I? <laughs> Now, Danny, watch your mouth. Why? Yours is the one that's moving. <laughs> Yippee, skippy. Men, men, men.